Hello and welcome everyone to Eureka Solutions webinar this morning on NetSuite for professional sports organisations. My name is Ross Johnston, I'm a solution consultant here at Eureka Solutions and I'll be hosting today's webinar. In terms of an agenda for today, we'll start off with a bit of an introduction to ourselves, Eureka Solutions, um, as a solution provider for NetSuite, before giving an overview of what Oracle NetSuite actually is, for those of you who may not be familiar with it yet. We'll then jump into some information on our sports and entertainment customers, a couple of examples of how um, different sporting organisations have used NetSuite and have used Eureka, Eureka Solutions as a solution provider for NetSuite. We'll then have a demonstration. It will be a, a look and feel demonstration just so you can get an idea of the visibility and insight that NetSuite can provide. And then finally, we have also got uh, Tom Schofield, who is the finance director at newly promoted Luton Town, who will be talk talking a bit about um, how NetSuite has um, fueled uh, and powered that um, growth into the Premier League and made the club Premier League ready. And I'm sure that's uh, a part of the session that a lot of people will be interested in here. So if you do have any questions as we go throughout the uh, webinar, then please just drop them in the Q&A chat box and we can get them at the end with Tom. Perfect, so who are we, Eureka Solutions? So just a bit about us to get us started. Um, Eureka Solutions was founded in 1996 on two core principles, which are still our focus to um, this day, those being technical expertise and customer service. Now, what do we do? We implement, develop and support NetSuite, which of course is the focus of today's session, as well as Sage 200, I iPlicit and our own integration application, eSynchly, in which we'll cover a couple of points on in a moment as well. Now, since um, 2004, we've grown from three staff to over 70 today. And looking back at our core principles, the majority of those are focused on that technical expertise. So the majority are in technical roles across the business. Going to our other core principle, um, our customer service, we publish all of our um, support reviews live on our website, which you can um, view for yourself. And on them, we average 9.7 out of 10 in terms of customer satisfaction. Now, the way that we work that is that any support case, once that is closed, Customer Sure then sends an email for the customer to fill out that feedback and it's an impartial review. So as I mentioned, I'm going to briefly touch upon this before we get into the NetSuite side of things. This is really just to highlight that we have our own integration application. Now, this isn't the focus for today, but it's just to highlight that that application is available if there are any integrations with third-party systems that you are looking to connect NetSuite with. Now, they could be third-party systems such as ticketing, e-commerce, or retail, and we can integrate via API or through file integrations as well. In terms of our experience with NetSuite, we have been a NetSuite solution provider for over 10 years now, starting in 2012, where we started this we wish to continue uh, receiving the EMEA New Partner of the Year Award. Now, to date, we have over 100 NetSuite projects, and we'll get into some example projects later on in the slides. Um, and we also received the NetSuite Five Star Partner Award in UK Best Performing Partner in 2021. Now, since then, NetSuite have stopped uh, giving out the Star Award and have moved to uh, accreditation. So we have received the NetSuite Expertise and ERP accreditation. Uh, as mentioned, we are a specialist in implementing NetSuite for sports and entertainment businesses, in which, once again, we'll go through some example projects momentarily. So you might be asking, what is NetSuite? Well, NetSuite is the world's number one cloud ERP system. NetSuite was founded in 1998, so really is a pioneer in cloud computing. It was then acquired by Oracle in 2016, and everything that you would expect in terms of security and data um, has only improved since then. NetSuite is a true 100% cloud-based business management system. Um, now that means that it's been developed on the cloud for the cloud. So since 1998, the core focus has always been on cloud computing for NetSuite. 
Now, as it's a, a true 100% cloud-based system, that means that it can be accessed on any device, anytime, anywhere. That means that you don't have to have um, any application downloaded onto your laptop uh, or um, your computer. You'll see today I'll be accessing NetSuite through a Google, Google Chrome browser. Now, NetSuite provides this one database for financials, HR, payroll, and CRM, meaning that all um, processes across the business can be modernized and automated and brought into one place. This means that you've got real-time visibility across all of these functions in the business. It means that we can get away from using disparate systems um, that maybe don't integrate or um, maybe don't connect well. Beyond that as well, NetSuite uh, also provides a solution for uh, multiple subsidiaries that are part of the group. So if you do have a group structure, then NetSuite can also automate the consolidation across that group as well. As mentioned, um, with the Oracle backing, everything that you would expect in terms of high class security and privacy, of course, does apply. Beyond that, next, we also have an availability commitment of 99.7%, which is, is actually in the contract um, with NetSuite. Now, in reality, um, over the past year, NetSuite has actually averaged 99.98% uptime, um, so a lot higher than that commitment. Now, that can be seen uh, online at status.netsuite.com if you want to have a look for yourself. As well as that, NetSuite also um, has automatic upgrades every six months. Now, what this means is that all customers that are using NetSuite, whether they implemented the system five, 10 years ago, or implemented it just now, they are all on the same version of the system and all benefit from new features, um, which are part of these upgrades and releases. NetSuite have recently um, released, actually in the past couple of days, the release notes for the 2023.2 upgrade, which will be rolled out across the following three months. And now what that also means is that there's no chance of version lock and you don't get stuck in with a system that is no longer being supported. Those upgrades run every six months. Now, all of these factors combined, um, mean that there are over 36,000 customers worldwide that are out there that are now using NetSuite. So it really is a tried and tested solution. In terms of functionality, i um, just got a graphic here just to show the different areas of NetSuite um, that are available. So of course, we've got our ERP, our, our core financials of the system. We've also got our CRM, which is part of the system. And beyond that, stuff like our uh, HR, human resources, our project management, e-commerce, can all be part of that single data source on one system. Meaning that regardless of what your role is across the business, you can access that information within NetSuite. Now beyond that as well, there's also options for payroll, um, OCR scan and capture, um, for supplier invoices, as well as advanced um, reporting um, solutions as well for the production of board packs or flash reports, if that's something that you need to um, create for your reporting side of things. Now, in terms of our experience with NetSuite and the customers that we work with, of course, this is just a snapshot of the over 100 end-to-end uh, -end implementations that we have provided. You'll see here that we've got a variety of different sports and entertainment customers. We've got sports clubs um, such as Luton, Hearts and Derby County, as well as governing bodies such as Scottish Rugby, the RNA, and you'll see here as well um, various different entertainment and sports-based businesses. One to note, uh, RNA being that um, it is actually the Open uh, starting today. Uh, so the RNA, the Royal and Ancient host the Open, um, which of course starts today and runs over the weekend. Um, I know that I'll be supporting Bob McIntyre. Uh, I don't know who everyone else will be supporting, but it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Now beyond this, um, we'll jump into a couple of examples of the projects that we have um, completed for these customers. So to begin with, we've got Heart of the Globin AFC. Uh, we implemented NetSuite for Hearts uh, following their third place finish in the Scottish Premiership, which secured European football, obviously a massive achievement for the club. Now, this um, securement of uh, European football triggered a review of their systems with the aim to modernise and automate processes, which were traditionally paper-based and Excel-based, so looking to bring in um, some automation on that front. On that front. With um, uh, Heart of Middlebane, they, they replaced uh, their legacy Pegasus Opera uh, finance and payroll system with NetSuite, but they also brought in the HR function as well, meaning that NetSuite now provides that real-time reporting across the entire business. 
Moving on from Hearts, we've also got St Andrews Lynx Trust. Now, St Andrews operates seven golf courses, most notably the Old Course, which you may know as the home of golf. They also have three clubhouses, seven, seven catering outlets, four retail shops, uh, and an e-commerce website as well. So various different revenue streams that they track all within NetSuite. Now, they selected NetSuite to replace their legacy access dimension system and a project that was focused on streamlining reporting, procurement, and document management when moving off of that legacy system. So Andrews Links also use NetSuite's advanced planning and budgeting tool. This is a Hyperion based tool that allows the modeling of what if scenarios, for example, how footfall could impact performance um, over a period of time. Moving on from St Andrews, another football club, uh, we have got is uh, Derby County FC. Um, now, Derby County replaced their legacy uh, chorus ERP system, um, which was um, became slow and no longer fit for purpose. Now, NetSuite improved visibility throughout the entire business for Derby County FC, providing access to dynamic real-time reports and really acting as a foundation to facilitate the club to drive change and growth across the organisation. Another example of a customer that we have worked with and implemented and support NetSuite for is Scottish Rugby Union. Now, Scottish Rugby Union are responsible for all of Scotland's uh, national rugby teams, as well as two professional teams being the Glasgow Warriors and Edinburgh Rug Rugby. Beyond that, they also have multiple responsibilities, such as um, the, the domestic leagues and competitions across Scotland. They are responsible for the running of them. Um, just like St Andrews, uh, Scottish Rugby also um, selected NetSuite as a replacement for their legacy access dimensions finance system. And although finance was the core focus of the initial um, project, they have recently um, started implementing the CRM side of NetSuite, as well as the warehouse management side, which they're actually going to be using for stock control and kit management within their kit rooms in different locations across Murrayfield. Now, next up, uh, we have got Luton Town, and um, we are kindly joined by uh, Tom Schofield, Finance Director at Luton Town Football Club today. And not to put uh, any pressure on Tom, but I'm sure this is a, a, a reason why a lot of you are here today to hear directly from him, from his experience with Eureka Solutions and NetSuite. So if it's OK, Tom, I'll just hand over to you to give a, a brief summary of your um, kind of challenges that you faced before you came on to NetSuite. And um, hopefully you'll have some nice things to say about ourselves and NetSuite as well. Um, yes, uh, thanks, Ross. Uh, morning, everyone. I hope you can all hear me OK. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just give a brief overview uh, on uh, Luton Town's position. So um, I joined the club in... Um, 2017, uh, we were in League Two at the time, um, and I actually joined to support the uh, development projects around our new stadium. Um, I joined from a corporate background, so it's, to be honest, a little bit of a, a culture shock to, to join what was at the time a, a relatively small football club. Um, lots, uh, you know, as Ross was describing previously, in terms of you know paper-based processes. Um, cash and check, uh, you know, even up to sort of quite relatively large uh, payments in terms of our overall revenue. Um, and really, uh, to be honest, struggling to produce kind of meaningful financial reporting uh, around forecasting, particularly uh, on the cash flow side, uh, was a bit of a struggle. Um, so to be honest, they, they were struggling a little bit on the finance side, uh, even in terms of the football club, then trying to go to a sort of multi uh, multi company structure. Uh, obviously consolidated accounts, all the rest of it. Uh, so it's becoming, you know, increasingly obvious. Uh, we had a sort of unsupported version uh, of Sage going at the time that that wasn't going to be uh, a solution we were going to be able to carry on using moving forward. So uh, in 2019, when we got promoted to the championship, uh, we saw that as an opportunity to invest a little bit in the finance team, modernise, uh, move things forward. So that was kind of the catalyst uh, of change for us at that at that time. So. We did, we considered a number of um, uh, accounting packages um, and uh, NetSuite, not necessarily the, uh, wasn't necessarily the, you know, the cheapest option, but we did, uh, we had a uh, uh, sort of demo day with Derby County, went up, uh, went up and, and spoke to them, talked to them about their experience with, with obviously that, uh, that package, that ERP package. Uh, as well as with Eureka in terms of the implementation and support, et cetera, uh, and we're impressed. 
Um, <clears throat> certainly, the NetSuite product itself, what, what I particularly liked about it was, uh, you know, the sort of flexibility uh, of it, you know, sort of small scale ERP rather than something, uh, you know, a bit more rigid uh, and clunky as I've worked with in sort of previous corporate environments. Um, and really, you know, the look and feel of it, the self-service aspects of it, you know, giving, giving licenses and access to people um, uh, in the club. Um, so, you know, they could do some of these things for themselves, answer some queries for themselves, et cetera. Uh, and obviously the ability to be able to in integrate uh, some, some of our other functionality um, directly into it seemed like a you know a good opportunity for us. Um, and then obviously with Eureka, particularly, uh, they'd obviously done done this bit uh, with Derby County, so that was a, that was obviously a plus point for us, having worked with a football club previously. Uh, so they're going to be in a better position to kind of understand uh, you know our specification and the particular kind of uh, you know uh, things around football um, particularly. Um, in terms of the actual uh, implementation. You know, have you ever been involved in an implementation project before? Um, it, it, you know, it does require a fair bit of work in terms of pulling uh, pulling data out of your old systems, getting it in a in a kind of workable, sensible format, uh, and deciding how you want it to look in the new system. Um, at the time, we were kind of upskilling the finance team as well, so I mean, it was something I'd, I was involved in uh, fairly heavily personally. Um, and it was also something I needed a lot, a lot of support with, which which I was able to get from the Eureka side. Uh, you know, certainly around the data cleanse, um, you know, templates, et cetera, that, that, that we're able to use uh, and set up and, and check uh, as we went through. So in terms of actually getting the data out, the transition piece and getting the system set up, uh, you know, that, that they were really helpful. Uh, and that did go uh, sm very smoothly. Uh, we were able to get not only the, that system set up, but we when we went live, uh, we immediately integrated uh, an AP um, system, an online AP system um, that's integrated with NetSuite and also a, a, a payroll system. So we have all that functionality live from day one, which again was a, a, you know, a big plus. Um, in terms of the uh, testing and training piece, obviously, uh, you know, a team from Eureka came down, uh, spent uh, to, I think it was probably around a week actually with us um, training the team up. Um, you know, we were kind of able to spot some tweaks and changes that we want, wanted to do live at the time, which is all very helpful. So, you know, we, we got the system in a fairly good place um, from the off. Uh, again, Eureka were, were, were central to that. Um, and to, again, in terms of ongoing support since then, uh, you know, uh, uh, available, uh, very responsive, uh, and I've got knowledgeable support team. So, <clears throat> Really, any issues we've encountered since then, we have been able to go back to Eureka and get them resolved uh, relatively quickly, which has been, you know, obviously very helpful. Um, <clears throat> in terms of where we are now, uh, as I said, we have got a, a kind of three company structure. Um, being able to pull the consolidated, account, uh, consolidated accounts out uh, is obviously fantastic, particularly as we now move into the Premier League. That's something we're going to need to, to be doing regularly. Um, the integrate uh, in terms of integrations, uh, the payroll system works fantastically. You know, direct postings to departments, account codes, even down to the match level, so, so we can apply sort of casual staff costs uh, by match. Um, and again, on the account payable side, obviously that's given us a kind of online. Um, we you know we've got rid of the paper, uh, an online auditable approvals process um, set up, which has been very helpful. Um, workflows around staff expenses, which we do directly in NetSuite, purchase orders, invoices, all that kind of all that kind of thing is all in the system, uh, all online. Uh, so uh, again, uh, you know, as, again as Ross mentioned, it's cloud-based access from anywhere. You know, so staff can go in and, and, and do all those all those bits and pieces themselves, which is which is very useful in terms of um, you know finance resource. Um, I think uh, yeah, and that, that that's that, that's really one of the big wins for me. I think is in terms of the the, the self service piece, um, but also as I mentioned, you know the flexibility of the product. We've ha we've had a number of um, structural changes, departmental changes, things like that. Obviously, again, you know at this point in time uh, and, and advancing into the Premier League, it's, it's something we're having to look at again. Uh, but it's something we're able to you, you know change ourselves um, and uh, implement and, and move forward with. Um, relatively straightforwardly so yes you know uh, to date uh, it's been a big success story and uh, yeah we're, we're very happy with the products and it's it's working well uh, and we're looking to looking to move forward and, and, and build on that really
Yeah. Brilliant. <clears throat> Excuse me. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for that, Tom. Uh, great, great to hear from you as always. Um, kind of as mentioned, uh, just for everyone here, uh, Tom is going to stay um, for a Q&A at the end. So thanks again, Tom, Tom for, your, for your words there. And um, if anyone's got any questions for Tom, then please feel free to stick them in the Q&A box and we can, we can get them at the end of the session. Perfect. So just a slide here before we jump into the demonstration around why NetSuite is perfect for uh, professional sports organisations. And there'll probably be a bit of repetition here in terms of the points that Tom has touched on. Um, but I guess that just goes to show that it is something that uh, is not unique to, to Lytton Town. Um, it is something that's experienced by sporting organisations across the board. Now to begin with, just to touch on the methodology of an implementation with NetSuite. Here at Eureka Solutions, we focus on what's called a suite success methodology. So that's bringing a lot of pre-built functionality and learnings from previous projects to make sure that you can get up and running with the system as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Now, beyond that as well, there is a, the option for a phased implementation or often referred to as a stairway approach, making sure that you're only using the parts of the system that you need when you need them. So say, for example, you want to focus on the core finance like Scottish Rugby did and then look to bring in a different aspects such as CRM in the future, then that is uh, something that you can do. Now, with that, NetSuite is one unified system across finance, uh, of course, across procurement, as Tom touched on there, a payroll once again as Tom touched on, a HR, CRM and so on. So that makes sure that you've got all of your data in one place, you don't have to use different systems or different paper processes to be able to carry out these functions across the business. Now NetSuite is of course flexible and scalable, which means that it is a future-proof system. We've got a variety of different um, customers that use NetSuite, all the way up to our largest customer who have a turnover over um, four billion um, pounds. So it really is a flexible and scalable solution that is truly future-proof. You'll hear there Tom talking about the uh, changes that need to um, happen with moving, moving uh, into the Premier League. Um, of course, NetSuite's got that flexibility to provide those uh, agile changes within the system. Beyond that, NetSuite is configurable and customizable, so it's easy to extend and integrate. And once again, Tom uh, touched on the training that we provide as part of our implementation. This means that there are areas of the system that you'll be able to configure and customize easily yourself without that reliance on Eureka Solutions as a solution provider. Now, of course, beyond that, our support team are always there if there is any help or support that you require beyond um, those changes that you can do yourself. Now with um, NetSuite, we'll get into the demonstration shortly and I'll show how this um, works in practice, but you can get an accurate breakdown of revenue and costs across events or match days if you're a, a sports club, meaning that you can really see that full P&L breakdown across those different activities within the business. Beyond that as well, there's an unlimited number of custom segments for you to slice and dice data. And um, once again, something that I'll get into during the demonstration. Now, NetSuite also provides real-time visibility through different dashboards and KPIs. Now, these dashboards and KPIs come as standard out of the box based on leading practices, based on how those 36,000 plus customers use NetSuite. Now, beyond that, it is a truly configurable and personalizable system. So if you do need to um, change your dashboards or add any additional KPIs, then that's something that you can do um, yourself. You're in control of what you see. Beyond that, NetSuite, of course, automates the finance function as well as key business processes um, across the entire business. So once again, getting away from those um, traditional legacy ERP systems or paper-based processes or um, email approvals, stuff like that, bringing that all into one system, making sure that that automation is there. Beyond that, there is also um, the option for project accountants. So if you do have different internal projects that you need to track costs for, and then of course they can be tracked into the system. We know from our experience with um, sports clubs, sports organizations, that things like stadium renovations, training ground developments, all need to be tracked. So NetSuite can also provide that detailed cost analysis of those projects as well. 
Now, of course, these are just some general reasons, but um, we'll move on to some actual results of moving to NetSuite. Now, this was a, a study conducted by SL Associates of actual NetSuite customers and the, um, the improvements across different KPIs that they experienced when moving to the system. You'll see here that we've got a key win in the visibility and actionable insight, which you'll see shortly when we get into the demonstration, with an increase of around 50 to 80% of those surveyed um, get getting that business visibility that they require. You also see here as well that we've got key wins across the time to, to close financial books, um, accounting staff, productivity, collection time for accounts receivable, have all seen um, between a 30 and 50% increase in improvement um, due to um, NetSuite being implemented for these businesses. Now, this is something that we also see um, reflected across our customer base as well. We often see uh, the likes of the time to close financial books reducing from, uh, say, 10 days all the way down to two days in some cases as well. Now, as, as mentioned, we're going to have a demonstration of the system today, so I'll just jump into that just now. Uh, just as a reminder as well, we'll have a QA and a at the end, so if you do have any questions as we go through the demonstration, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box and we'll get them towards the end of the session. Perfect. So you should be able to see my screen just now. I am currently on a Google Chrome browser on the NetSuite landing page here. So if we go to log in, we will log into the demo account that we have got set up for today. Now the demo account that we've got set up is an example of the financial first edition of NetSuite. NetSuite has various different editions depending on the type of organization. And as the name suggests, Financials First is really focused on that core finance of the system. So we'll just log in here just now. Something to know is that you can have the likes of multi-factor authentication, um, can also have single sign-on if that's something that you use across the business. Of course, being a demo account, don't have that set up um, for today's demonstration. Now you'll see here that we have logged into our demo account for today, um, AFC Richmond, if there's any Ted Lasso fans. So this is an example of a financial first edition of NetSuite, and we'll go through um, some of the different roles and some of the different functions that this edition provides within NetSuite. Taking a step back, and um, just coming up to the top right-hand corner, you'll see that we are currently logged in as Andy Morgan, our CFO in the system. If we scroll through the list here, you'll see that there are various different roles that come out of the box as standard with NetSuite. Now, these roles provide um, they, they provide that basis for you to then tweak the permissions and restrictions on what you would want these different people across the business accessing. Now, of course, with that, it gives you a head start. It means that you've already got a CFO role based on how NetSuite expects a CFO to work within the system. You see here that we also have a global search. So say, for example, we wanted to look for um, different records or transactions in the system. We can type ahead the first couple of letters there, and you see here that we get all of the suggestions in terms of what we might be looking for. We can also use different prefixes. So say, for example, we're looking for a certain invoice, or a certain customer or supplier. We can also use the search there to, to navigate there quickly and easily. Beyond our global search, you see that we've also got a traditional menu structure. Now, our traditional menu structure provides access to different areas of the system. You see here we've got our recent records, we've got shortcuts where we can add pages that we access often, and then we've got the different modular breakdown of the system. So you see here um, access to our customers, suppliers, um, payroll, um, our fin core finance of the system, and so on. Really that traditional menu structure where we can uh, navigate to where we need to be. Now below that, you see that we have got our home dashboard. Now our home dashboard is our own space and is a big part of the reason why so many customers with NetSuite see a, a dramatic increase in terms of the visibility and insight that they get from the system. Now you see with our home dashboard, we've got different sections, which we'll go through in a moment. But just to note as well, these home dashboards come out of the box based on the user roles within NetSuite, but they can also be customized and personalized by the end user as well. So say, for example, we wanted our reminders to be front and central in our home dashboard. You'll see here we can drag and drop it there. We can change um, the visibility that we've got to make sure that we've got access to the information in the format that we need that information for actionable insight. 
Starting off here with our reminders, you'll see that we've got reminders um, for different actions across the system. Um, as Tom mentioned, the likes of approval processes can all be run in the system. Um, so we've got our purchase requests for this user that need to be approved, expense reports that need to be approved, and so on. Um, something that we'll come back to later on in the demonstration. But you'll see here as well that we've also got that sort of more broad insight across the business. So any new customers, um, um, partnership sponsors, uh, any new suppliers that we've recently taken on, as well as more granular details. So you see here, we've got invoices over 30 days old, over 50,000 pounds in value. So really making sure that the CFO has visibility of those high level invoices that they need to track. Now beyond that, custom reminders can be created um, to allow you to um, have visibility of pretty much any data that's in the system and pull that onto your home dashboard. You'll see here as well that in terms of the setup of the reminders, it's really easy once again to just drag and drop these different reminders onto the home dashboard to make sure that we've got visibility of them. Coming down to our KPIs, you'll see that we've got KPIs uh, once again given visibility across the entire system for the CFO here. We've got things like our revenue, bank balance, and payables, receivables, as well as visibility across our total pipeline deals. So drawn into that CRM side of the system, once again, something that we'll get onto later in the demonstration. Now you see here that if we hover over these figures, these are all drillable. So all of these figures come from different reports in the system. So expenses, for example, if we want to drill into that, if we want to interrogate these figures further, we can click through that. Given that NetSuite is based in a browser, we can also open in a new tab using that standard browser functionality. So that means we can continue working away in our home dashboard whilst opening up our profit and loss account, in this case, in a separate tab. And now we'll come back to this profit and loss uh, in a moment and show you some of the different ways that we can slice and dice the data within the system. Now the same applies for all of these other uh, KPIs here. If we wanted to interrogate any of these figures further, we could drill into them and take us to the report that is um, producing these figures. Now with NetSuite, there's various different reports that come out of the box, but you can also create reports from scratch as well as customizing um, reports that are already in the system as well, making sure that you can get that visibility of the information that you need in the format that you want as well. Coming down the right-hand side, you'll see that we've got some examples of KPI meters. So just taking our KPIs and displaying them in a more visual format, looking at our revenue and expenses here. Once again, if we wanted to change these, we can just come to the setup. We can also take these out of the system as well, if need be. Same applies for our KPIs. We can add standard KPIs that come out of the box, but if there's something more specific that we are tracking, we can also create custom KPIs and add them to our home dashboard as well. Scrolling down further, you'll see that we have got a couple of different ways that we can navigate through the system. So our navigation shortcut group and our tiles. But once again, it really is up to the user's preference on how they wish to navigate through the system, whether that be using the Google search at the top, the traditional menu structure, tiles or navigation shortcut groups, or drilling through the different KPIs that are on the home dashboard. You'll get to where you need to be within NetSuite for that full interrogation of figures. Now, beyond that, of course, if you didn't want any of these sections on the home dashboard, you can simply remove it from there. You see here as well that we can also personalize the home dashboard and add in different sections to make sure once again that we've got visibility of the information that we need. Scrolling down here, you'll see that we've got a couple of different trend graphs in the middle there, just showing our bank balance by period. Once again, we've got different options in terms of the setup of this, so we can um, put multiple different KPIs on the one trend graph. We can change the KPIs that we're looking at and the period that we're looking across. You see here as well that we've also got various different options in terms of the way that we display this information, um, making sure that we've got that visibility that we need. On the right hand side, you see here we've got an example of a report snapshot in the system. So this is a revenue stream analysis. So something that we know from working with a lot of sports organizations is the variety and the number of different revenue streams across the business and the importance of being able to track that revenue in the form of a revenue stream analysis. You see here that we've got the breakdown in terms of our first team players, um, our football income, tickets, stadium events, and our sponsorships here as well. Now this is just just an example of how you can slice and dice that data. Once again, when we get into the profit and loss, I'll show you exactly how that works. 
Scrolling down further here, um, you'll see that we've got a couple of different trend graphs once again, as well as a financial scorecard, giving that more in-depth detail to our financial performance for our CFO. You'll see here as well that these figures are compared across a longer um, period, so we can look at this period versus last period, but also look at um, uh, previous periods as well. Now, the same applies, these figures are drawn from reports in the system, and we can also create the likes of trend graphs on the fly, and we do have that full access to the data so if we did want to take this out of the system then we can download that and take it out of NetSuite for any board packs or flash reports that we are looking to produce. Now once again we'll go back to our P&L. Um, now our P&L you'll see here on the left hand side is pretty streamlined in terms of the chart of account structure. Now the reason for that is NetSuite provides unlimited segments to allow you to slice and dice that data which we'll get into shortly. Before we do that you'll see that these figures are completely drillable so if we wanted to interrogate our revenue figure there and get all the way down into the invoice level of detail you'll see here we can do that. Once again you using uh, the browser functionality, opening new tabs. That means that we can continue working away on this profit and loss detail report whilst opening up the individual invoices that make that um, full figure there. So we can get all the way down to that invoice level of detail from a couple of clicks from our home dashboard, making sure that we can interrogate all of those figures quickly and easily. You'll see here that we've also got various different options down the bottom, whether that be filtering our p and um, looking at different revenue streams or customers or departments. And you'll see here as well that we've also got various different options in terms of rolling back and looking at previous um, periods, as well as having the option to do a custom period as well if we want to view that. Just roll this back to the previous uh, financial year just to get a larger source of demo data and you'll see here if we come to our column we can start to add these different segments that allow us to slice and dice our data now as mentioned you can have unlimited custom segments here it really is driven by what you need to report on we can set up in the system you see here a couple of examples maybe revenue stream which we touched on earlier so if we click on revenue stream and then refresh our p l you see that we've got a full profit and loss breakdown for each of the revenue streams across our business so say for example our commercial side of the business we can break that down further into our broadcast retail and sponsorship and then look at the total for the full commercial revenue stream as well same applies for our players if we wanted to break that down across academy and first team while still maintaining that full visibility of the total then we can get that level of analysis just with the setup of these different segments for reporting now beyond that another couple of examples that we've got set up today of course getting that um, kind of uh, I guess high level breakdown of revenue is important, but you may want to go that one step further and get that match by match, fixture by fixture, event by event level of analysis as well. So if we select fixture as our column and click refresh, you'll see here that in this demo account for AFC Richmond, we've got our Carabao Cup, we've got our FA Cup and we've got our leak, but then we've got the breakdown into each individual fixture there and we can get that full p l across fixtures as well so that we can see accurate what our revenue and costs are related to each of our fixtures across the season. So once again, in this level of analysis um, can be uh, made possible through these different classifications which are available um, for slicing and dicing. And it really is dependent on what you need to report on um, is what is set up in the account. Say for example, for cost center analysis, you want that visibility of departments, you can get that visibility of um, the different departments within, within the organization as well. Once again, having that hierarchy where we're looking at the first team players and staffs, as well as the total for the first team and so on. But this applies as well for location if you wanted to look across different locations as well as another example we see being internal projects so going back to that in project accounting if you want to be able to track the costs for different stadium renovations training ground developments and so on then you can get that level of analysis through these different classifications and segments in NetSuite. So coming back to our home dashboard and just going through another report here quickly, you'll see that we have got our budget versus actual report, which shows the actual amount versus the amount that we have budgeted for, as well as any variance in the percentage that we are over budget. You see down here that we have got our um, budget category, so we can load in different versions of the budget 
based on our performance. That might be in promotion, remaining in the same, same league, relegation, and so on. Or it might just be that you reforecast partway through the year and want to bring in uh, that new, new version of the budget to do that budget versus actual comparison. As mentioned earlier on, there's a couple of different options for more advanced budgeting, whether that be um, net suites planning and budgeting, um, Hyperion based um, uh, tool, or whether that be add ons such as Solution 7, which um, is particularly useful for the creation of board packs and flash reports as well. So coming back to our home dashboard and back to our reminders, we'll see in this row in the CFO, we have got two purchase requests that need to be approved. Now from here, you'll see that we can um, bulk approve from here if we are looking to do so, or we can look into the PO in a bit more detail and make that decision on whether we want to approve or reject that PO. So we'll take this one, for example, um, click in here, drill down to the PO itself, and we'll see here that it's a purchase order that's been raised by our employee, Abby Kwan, um, for first team training equipment for the 20. 24 season. You see here that you can see all the detail in terms of the supplier that it's for, um, as well as any other details that want to be held on this PO. Now beyond the, the core um, purchase order um, entry screen here, you can also add or remove custom fields as well. So if there's anything beyond this that you want to hold on the um, purchase order or any other transactions or records in the system, of course, you can do that. You also see here that we can also track communication as well as any related records. We can attach files um, to the records and transactions in the system as well to make sure that we've got that full traceability. If we just go ahead and approve our PO, and then come back in and look at the communication. You see here that on the communication tab, we can see any of the messages that have been sent out of the system. So you see here when I approved uh, this PO, it's automatically sent that to our supplier. Now that can be handled on a supplier by supplier basis. Maybe that's suitable for some suppliers, not, not, not suitable for other suppliers. But this has automatically emailed um, a PO to that supplier with all of the information that we've got on that transaction record once that PO has been approved by this user. Now, in terms of the um, workflows that are available there, um, the, the, the POs can go through sort of any workflow that you have. So whether that be um, departmental or hierarchical or a mixture of both, that can be set up using NetSuite's Visual Workflow Generator. Now, beyond that as well, of course, the visibility, making sure that we've got that information, we're modernizing and moving away from our paper-based processes. You'll see here that NetSuite also holds a full audit trail of who has approved this PO and when they have done that as well, making sure that for audit purposes, we can track that back quickly and easily as well. Now, in terms of the actual entry of the POs, um, as Tom touched on, you've got the full self-service side of NetSuite, opening up the system to other users across the business. You see here that we have an employee center role, which is a lighter license access type, which means that we can um, create and approve POs as well as expense claims in the system as well. So you see here we've actually got the PO140 um, that was entered by this user. And you'll see here that we've got our status so we can maintain visibility of that throughout, um, throughout the process. Now with those POs, that can also go through a two-way or a three-way um, workflow, a uh, matching workflow, to make sure that we are looking for any variances and managing by exceptions when those supplier invoices do come into the system. Now, this um, employee centre is also the type of role that is used for the HR side of things. If you are looking to use the HR system within NetSuite, then the employee centre is expanded out to include stuff like um, time off requests, as well as maintaining visibility across the people side of things as well. Now moving on, uh, of course we don't have time to go through all of the different roles um, that we've got in this demo account, but just quickly before we go on to our Q&A, we'll log in as the sales manager role. Now as mentioned, NetSuite has the full CRM capability in the system as well, so in the sales manager role here you can see that the dashboard is focused around tracking sales and new leads and new business. There's that full lead to prospect to customer tracking in the system as well, as well as being able to track our open opportunities and our sales pipeline tracking as well. 
Once again, these are drillable. So if we click through onto our current open opportunities, you'll see here that we have got an away kit sponsorship 23-24 um, opportunity for our um, sponsor Bet Sport. You'll see here from, um, from this screen, once again, we can track all of the different information that we require on an opportunity. If we do need to create a quote or an estimate, we can do that as well and send that out of the system, much like we were doing with our POs. And you'll see here as well that with our estimate or quote, we can also convert that directly into a sales order. Now with that, we can also um, create the sales order in the system. That can also go through approval if need be. And then from there, if the sales order has a billing schedule, we can then automate the invoicing of that as well, making the finance team's job easier, um, meaning that there's less kind of manual chasing up on those as well. So in terms of time, eh, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Um, but of course, if um, if you do want to see more of NetSuite, we have, of course, just scratched the surface today, then please do get in touch following today's session. And we would be more than happy to set up a tailored demonstration to go through that in some more detail for you. So I'll just stop sharing my screen for just now, and we will go to the Q&A part of the session. So just double check that you're with us, Tom. Are you still here? I am. Yeah, brilliant. Perfect. So I guess just to get us started, Tom, um, I know looking back at the initial challenges that you mentioned with the previous system, as well as some of the key points um, that you mentioned and improvements, just wondering, I know you mentioned self-service and the flexibility to allow you to make those changes as a business, um, as the business moves forward. Just wondering what has been the biggest improvement that you've seen from NetSuite? Um, to be honest, I, I mean, I, I know I've already mentioned it, but I think, uh, I think that self-service piece is very important. Um, as I said previously, you know, in paper-based systems and, uh, and things like that, uh, getting things approved, getting things through a formal process. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to get people to follow it. Um, uh, you know, those kind of challenges. When you've got it obviously all in the system, people have got, you know, their access rights. Uh, people need to need to go into it, create purchase orders, you, you know, follow through those processes um, naturally. Um, you know, it's, be, it's been great to get the business um, signed up with NetSuite uh, and involved, you know, running their own reporting, um, answering their own questions to some extent. Um, so all that has been has been very helpful, um, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably say that's been the biggest the, the biggest shift uh, that I've seen in the business as well as as well as with the product, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I think as well, just kind of going back to. I guess a point that you mentioned around talking to Derby County, I guess beyond Eureka's experience with sporting organisations and what we've done for customers, how important was that and what value did you find in talking to other sports clubs about the way that they use NetSuite? Sorry, Ross, can you, can you just start that again? My, my Wi-Fi just dropped out. I didn't, I didn't hear. Yeah, no problem. Just a reminder, everyone, we are live, so these things happen. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I was just going back to your point that you mentioned earlier, Tom, around um, speaking with Derby County and then the, the kind of, I, I guess, their experience with the system. Beyond Eureka's experience with sporting organisations, what value and how important has that been in talking to other sports clubs about how they have used NetSuite? Um, well, that is that is obviously that has been very helpful. Um, the uh, you know obviously talking to, to Eureka again through the setup, um, you know it, it, it's obviously essential. You, you've got a team of experts there. Uh, I think what we found um, <clears throat> with NetSuite is that you know it's almost uh, I, I don't want to say too too, too big, but you know it, it, it's it's a very it was a very big step change. It's very deep. You know what you can do with it. And you know we're still sort of in the position where we you know don't feel like we've uh, you know uh, kept, captured everything that we, that we could possibly do with it, I guess. Um, so certainly in terms of sport, talking to other sports clubs around you know wins they've had, things they found useful, reports they found useful, structures they found useful in terms of how they've how they've got uh, got their chart of accounts set up, for example, and things like that. So specific things. Uh, to do with, uh, you know, um, the particulars of the sporting industry and the football industry. Um, obviously, you know, all, all, that, all that kind of stuff is is helpful. Um, and again, I guess, you know, in terms of 
add-ons, integrations, things that they've that they've done, uh, you know, to, to to make NetSuite better, you know, to make the solution work better for them. Um, mm-hmm. Again, that's that's things that we've discussed with other other sports clubs and has been has been helpful. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And um, I know you mentioned earlier on about NetSuite providing the flexibility and perhaps the the agility to uh, make changes as as you continue to kind of grow your usage of the system and the business develops. I guess just in terms of future um, plans and um, beyond the kind of I guess the work that needs to be done to make sure that um, your Premier League ready and everything's in place for that. Have you got any future plans for how you're looking to increase your usage of NetSuite over time? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, it, it probably is going to be further further system integration. I guess the um, we are we we use the sort of uh, or started using the sort of basic CRM functionality um, within NetSuite. Uh, the CRM piece is obviously something we're look, we're interested in. You know, using that data moving forward, particularly obviously and hopefully uh, as, as the fan base grows. Uh, so, there's, so you know, a CRM project and an integration with NetSuite potentially uh, is is very much on the horizon. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we've got lots of other cell you know, systems, things that we didn't necessarily. Um, I mean, we considered them, I guess, uh, but you know, in terms of our ticketing system, uh, our retail system, are there any other opportunities, uh, you know, to bring those uh, into or integrate them with, uh, you know, with the NetSuite product? Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And um, I, I suppose just uh, one one final question from from me just uh, came to mind. There was uh, around I know during the initial implementation, um, obviously. It was a bit of a turbulent time with the pandemic um, and, and I know that something that you were looking forward to was having that match level breakdown of revenue and costs available at your fingertips. Um, just looking for a bit of, I guess, a bit of um, insight into how useful that has been um, kind of going forward. Yes, well, I mean, as you touched on, it wasn't particularly useful uh, immediately because we, we had to play all our matches behind closed doors. Um, so yes, it's taken a little while uh, to see the benefit of that, but we have now had, you know, we, we've had we've had two seasons of championship football. Um, obviously, getting through fully the twenty one twenty two system, and uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I'll just say, so we did, you know, in our old accounting system, we were able to to, to tag stuff if you like, code stuff um, to a match code, but. It was really only stuff we were journaling. So it was kind of high level, you know, the ticket revenue, for example, go to a match. You'd get four or five lines of analysis, which was, you know, of some use, um, you know, by creating the kind of class structure around around uh, match days, you know, it, everything is going there from, you know, as I said, sort of casual, casual staff hours, you know, the, the stewarding cost um, right down to, you know, player performance bonuses, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> being able to, to view that on a match by match basis, so you know we had that full season uh, back in 21-22. Being able to look forward and use that for budgeting purposes for the following season was obviously, you know, extremely extremely helpful. Um, and yeah, you know, so sort of the, 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 the as and when the fixture list is published, you you can kind of just just kind of drop your drop your forecast in. Um, so that that has been a that that's been a big a big change and a big help. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, we've actually got a, a, a question that's came through there. Um, I think this one's uh, for, for you, Tom. It's what was the biggest driver to change on the next week? Um, so I guess what what kind of forced the change or, or made the made, made the consideration to move on to a new system? Um, I think so I, I I kind of touched on that on that initially. So you know there was the sort of increased complexity in in the business structure. You know, as I said, we were running the football club and also looking to looking to build a stadium so we did need to create that complexity but actually probably probably the key thing from you know when I started uh, at the club um, as I said it was you know in terms of getting meaningful financial reporting um, and particularly around uh, around as I said that you know that cash flow is obviously key uh, in all business but particularly particularly in in, in football where you know uh, Lots of lots of lots of football clubs are making losses, etc. Uh, so it's, it's you know that that's really really fundamental, and we you know we needed needed a better a better finance system, better financial information to be able to to you know produce 
um, meaningful forecast, etc. So, um, you know, next week, getting into that kind of discipline uh, and using the you know the better systems, etc., has helped us to do that. You know, we are we, we, we are you know good at that now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes, I, I'd say that you know uh, in terms of the reporting, etc., was probably probably the key thing that we were we were really missing. Yeah, brilliant. Right. And I, th- I think this question is probably best for me to pick up on. The uh, question is, do you do integrations with systems like Ticketmaster? Um, so yes, with our vSynclair application, um, we can um, set up third-party integrations with the um, likes of ticketing systems, retail systems, e-commerce systems, basically any third-party system that you need to connect with. Now, there's different options there depending on the sophistication of the third-party system, whether that be through an API connection or through a file-based connection. But that's something that Eureka um, can manage as well internally. We've got our own development team that work on um, that. Work on that. Um, integration application, be simply. Um, Ticketmaster is actually a, a system that we have integrated before we have um, built a connector um, for one of our customers. Okay, got another question. Um, I think once again, um, probably best if I pick this up um, on how long does an implementation take? <laughs> so, so an implementation is typically between three to six months. Um, now that is dependent on a lot of factors we've obviously mentioned. Um, that NetSuite, of course, as the name suggests, is a suite of different modules. So depending on how big the initial project is, that can have an impact on time. Another thing that Tom touched on is that there are resources, of course, required on the customer side, as with any um, new implementation of a system. So we often find that given that maybe six month period, just to make sure that everyone can complete all of their responsibilities um, can work better. Now, it is largely driven by what your requirements are, how quickly you want to go live. But of course, if that's something that you want to discuss with us further, then please feel free to get in touch following today and we can have more detailed conversations around what that implementation could look like for you. Okay, perfect. So that's taking us up to bang on the hour. Can't see any co- any other questions just now. Um, so I guess, once again, thanks a lot, Tom, um, for joining us today. It's um, been great to speak with you as always. Nice to be here, thank you. And, 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 and th- thanks a lot, everyone, for, for taking the time this morning to join us for um, our webinar um, on NetSuite for professional sports businesses.